Welcome to Weekly Meeple Chat, Week 5, and the next game we're going to discuss is Liar's Dice. Uh, and I have the question here, bluffing for over 500 years. And the reason for that is, according to Board Game Geek, I read that apparently uh, it was played by the Incans. Incas. Wow. Uh, and it was brought over by Pizarro to Europe. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, <laughs> uh, but it is a bluffing game. So let's take a look uh, at the stats. It was supposedly, see, that's the thing. It says 1800 and Board Game Geek, but if it was the, uh, the, the Incan Empire was defeated over 500 years ago. So there's some discrepancies there. Uh. So it's ages 8 and up, 2 to 8 players, 15, th sorry, 2 to 6 players, yep. uh, 15 to 30 minutes. The BGG rating is 6.9. Overall rank is 569 out of over 15,000. Strategy rank 214, which is odd because it's really, it's, it is a probability game, but there's, there's a lot of luck involved. <laughs> uh, party game, yes, definitely uh, it should be ranked high like that. 43 out of over 485 such ranked games. Family rank, 123 out of over 1,600. So this game has four different rankings. I know, it's the most I've ever seen. Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> so let's go over how you play. Okay. So there's different versions of this. And so each player is going to get five dice. And uh, let's say we're playing a game of three players. And each player gets their own cup. This red die is going to use, be used to mark your bid. Now these dice will not be used. So it's important to note that there's only 15 dice <coughs> in the game. So in the first round, if anybody bets more than 15 dice, then... They're foolish because they'll be challenged and lose. <laughs> There's only 15 possibilities. Uh, so everybody's going to roll their dice in their cups. So they would roll it, and then they would do this and hide it so no one else can see. But for you, you have to see it in camera. <laughs> so each person rolls their dice. No one gets to see their dice. So let's say this player is, is going to go first. Now, you notice that there are no uh, ones. The stars are wild, which means you can bid on stars or uh, they'll count for any face that you want. So this player could say, well, geez, I know I have three fours. And I bet you other people have rolled fours, but he doesn't know how many there are. So he'll just take a guess and say, I bet there's at least, uh, since I have three, I bet you there's six fours. And so that player either bids or challenges. Well, because they're the first player, they can't have nobody to challenge. Now, the next player will have to decide to challenge that bid. And they go, well, geez, I have three fours. It probably wouldn't be a good idea to challenge. Uh, so they're going to do a different bid. They're going to say, I bet you there are eight fours because they have fours as well. Now, the next player can change to a different side. You, can never, you cannot go backwards on the track. They could instead say, go for a different number they can say i bet there are eight fives because they have fives so you can go up on the die this player can either bet on fives or sixes but cannot bet on threes or twos this player could also say i think there are uh four stars so this is the star betting track so this person because they don't have the, they're, they're going to say they have eight fives so they went up from a four to a five so they raised the bid. This player is going to say, like, you know, I don't think there's that many fives. I'm going to challenge. So he announces a challenge. Everybody shows their dice. This player has a five and a star, which counts as a five. This player has no fives, and this person only has two fives. So unfortunately, this player lost the bid. And when you lose a bid, you lose as many dice as the difference because there are only four fives. And they bet they said that there would be eight fives, eight minus four is four so this player loses four dice oh my gosh now there is a player elimination rule you cannot lose your you cannot lose your last die let's say they bid nine fives well they couldn't get knocked out okay uh the only way you can get knocked out of this game is if you challenge somebody and you lose so if they never challenge anybody then they will not lose your last die so how do you win then if you can never lose your last die if you don't challenge well in a three-player game, as soon as two players 
are down to one die. Let's say the game keeps on playing. This person, so this person has two dice left. This person would win because they have two dice, and the other people lost one die each. Now, there's one rule that uh, we don't normally play with, but you can do do something called show and roll. Roll. So, let's say I we play another round here, and I say there are uh, three fives. Okay, I could outside my cup. Show three fives to everybody to show that my bid is honest. Okay, so then I could even pick up my dice and re-roll them to freak people out and maybe make them think that I rolled more fives. If someone has more than what is shown there and, and they're challenged, then they don't lose the challenge. So if someone says, for instance, well, I bet you there's more than three fives. Well, that's not going to help them because if you have more than what is shown, then you win the challenge. That the person who made the bet wins the challenge. If there is a tie, the person that challenged still uh, loses the challenge, and every player, including the person that lost the challenge, loses one die. Wow! If you tie. Wow! So again, you keep on playing until uh, everybody has lost all their dice, or or there's only one die left, and one player has more than one die. Oh my goodness. So. <sighs> yeah, well, let's talk about how we what you think. Well, let's look at the playthrough first. Okay. So, this might make a little bit more sense based on what I was saying. Never does to me, but it probably will to our our lucky subscribers. <laughs> so here we are rolling. We're playing a six-player game. We're rolling our dice, and notice we're looking at what we rolled, trying to hide it from each other. And I went first, so I'm saying. Uh, because we're playing with all 30 dice, you pretty much, the odds are that you're going to have a high bid. So I bid that there would be at least eight threes. Now, for 30 dice, that's a pretty reasonable bid. It, a, somebody would be unlikely to challenge me if they think there's less, less than eight threes. Right. And I was next to have to challenge. and. Uh... So you had to raise the bid. Right. Because you're not going to challenge me. So you decided to uh, bid on stars. Yes. So you said that there was at least six stars, which is a pretty reasonable bid because there's six of us playing. Right. And maybe I had a whole bunch. I don't. I can't see what I had in there, so I don't know. And again, it's going a little slow here because I'm explaining the game to two people who have never played it before. Maybe you should speed up a little. Yeah, I'll go to the, another... Yeah. Well, no, because someone's about ready to bid. Oh, okay. So I'm explaining how you have to increase the bid. You have to move up on the track. So either either the next person is going to have to say there's 13 of something, or they're going to have to say there's seven stars. Okay, so Austin decided to challenge Julie. And so now we're counting the number of stars. So let's see who won here. Oh, so there was a tie. So, because there was exactly, you got lucky, Julie, there was exactly uh, six stars. We all had to lose a die, and you kept your dice. That's right. Yeah. So, let's move on in the game here. Okay. Let's see what else happens. So, you can see how many dice have been lost in the game. It's a lot. And I, You know, you won this game. I did. I yeah. don't know how I did it, but I did. Well, you had, <laughs> in fact, we can get to that. I think you had two left. I think I had uh, more than Brandon that. Brandon decided to challenge, even though he had one die left, and he lost that challenge. Right. He was being silly. So here we are. We're still we're making bets. And notice that the bets are smaller because there's not a lot of dice left. So, yeah, you had three left. David had two. Austin Austin had three. three. Eddie, no, Eddie had one die left. Eddie had one die. Brandon was out. So we're counting. So you did. And then Austin lost two of his dice. Yeah, so he he challenged. Right. He thought there wouldn't be uh, three threes. And so uh, there, there, there was enough threes, if I remember there. So let's see who, uh, if we can get to the last round here. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Look at Brandon's leg. He's like, let's see who wins. So David, oh, David challenged, challenged and he lost. And because 
three players only had one die left. <laughs> I won. And you and yeah, you won. I couldn't believe I won. So let's go. I don't win this game. I don't understand this game. Well, let's go to I how we rate it. Got you lots go of help. first. Okay, I it is entertaining again because of the dice, and you guys know I love dice. I do like hearing the dice being shaken in the cup. I think that's always just such a happy sound. There is good player interaction because you you're all trying to you know figure out what's going on. It was a lot of fun with a lot of players. Like we don't play it very often, so I don't know how it would be with less. Um, for me personally, it's very challenging on um, the the red dice on where to put how, how to put the red dice down depending on what I have. I get very confused on what number's supposed to go with what thing. Well, you so, have you have you have issues remembering how to increase the bid. Yeah. Yeah. But I still I still had fun cuz I won. <laughs> right. And so I'll talk about now what I like about okay, it. Okay. So it's a, I like how it's the bluffing has to be progressive. It always has to increase. Mm. So that track does work well. And it does teach probability and logic very well. So this has some great math connections. So it is best with five or more. With three or four players, I don't think it would be as fun. So it is conceptually difficult for some players to understand how to increase the bid because going from a, the fact that you got to, if you say six threes, you can increase the bid to six fours or six fives, or you go to seven threes, that can be a little hard at yes. first for some people. And then the player elimination avoidance is, is good in theory, uh, but you can get into some circular uh where the person has one die left, right. just, just manages to hang in there and doesn't challenge. So therefore, they're just turns can be wasted yeah. while that person's challenging over and over. I mean, doesn't challenge. And so people won't challenge that person. That's true. So it works, but it, it, can, it can get into an issue of making the game last oh, longer. Oh, I agree. I agree. So let's take a look at how we rated it. Oh, right. So we played it three times since of August of 2017. And we got this game on sale, so it was worth trying. Oh, heck yeah. So I say it's okay. We'll play it in the mood. But, you know, in the mood is when we have people over. When right. A, when we can have a group of five or six. Right. And because of the uh, the betting issue, you rated it a I what? Rated, I rated it a five because I can take it or leave it. I will never say, hey, let's play this. Um, but if we have a lot of people over and they really want to play it, I'll will I'll participate unless yeah. there's just not enough room for me and I'm happy to bow out so someone new so someone new can play it. Right. So So I'm not upset if I don't Well play that's it. why we've only played it three times because right. we don't always have that many people to play with, but we will play it in large groups. Yeah. So that's Liar's Dice and now we're gonna move on to the next game. Thank you.